Hello, and welcome to this video presentation. My name is Paul Brett. I'm a senior software support analyst supporting the Transformation Extender product from IBM. The topic for this video is deploying ITX maps from Design Studio. Feel free to reach out to me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett IBM. So why would you want to use the DTX deployment features in the Design Studio? Well, they can be useful for where quick testing is required on an FTP target, of course unsecure. It can provide a small advantage to have everything within the Design Studio with no need to switch to third-party transfer utilities. Additional files can be sent in the deployment and the file itself is an XML structure and can easily be edited with third-party tools and or scripts. Obviously, for production deployments, FTP unsecure is rarely an option and this deployment tool cannot be used. For that reason, it's only really good in a pre-production environment, but as previously said, it has its uses. So let's demonstrate this Design Studio deployment feature. I've created a project here called XML Test Deploy. Whenever you create a project in the ITX Extender Studio Navigator, it also creates under miscellaneous a deployment file called .dtx deployment and the beginning matches the name of your project. If we double click this you will see that there are no scripts in this deployment file. I have a command prompt and you can see that this file is actually quite small only 129 bytes. I have an explorer window open at the same directory and if we edit that file you'll notice it's XML content and pretty minimal. Okay so let's add a script. I'm going to leave the name of script one that's fine. From the drop down list of server boxes you can see that we have no servers currently defined. Now we can add a server by clicking on this blue link here and it takes you to the deployment preferences box for you to be able to add a server. Alternatively, from the window menu, you can go into preferences, drill down to transformation extender, then into the deployment subsection and add the server here. It doesn't matter either way. So I'm going to add a server called AIX72A. The host name is going to match that. Doesn't need to, but in this case, it does. The platform is going to be AIX and I'm going to add my login information in the appropriate boxes. Then click finish. So my server's de defined, I can click OK. Now in this deployment editor, you will notice that the server hasn't appeared. I need to save and close and then reopen and then the server is available from the drop down box. If I'd added it using this blue link here, it would have been available straight away. OK, so which map am I going to deploy to this server? Well, before we deploy anything, I've got a PuTTY session open to that server. And as you can see, there are no files in the directory design studio. So let's add a map that we're going to deploy. If I click add, choose a map source file, click the star button on my keyboard to expand all source files, choose the one I want. Then within there, the map that I want to deploy, map or maps. In this case, I'm going to go with just test one. The map server location, well, I've put in the full directory where I want the test map to appear. I'm not going to tick this add input cards box just yet. And now this is finished. I can save this deployment script and up here on the top right is the actual deploy button. If I click that, confirm the server, confirm the script and click finish. The deployment is happening in the foreground. I could click here to run it in the background or I could always tick this box to always run deployments in the background, but I prefer not to. I prefer to have them in the foreground so I can see what's going on. And there we go. The deployment is successful. I click OK. And then we check on the server itself. And if we list files, you'll see I have test1.mmc. OK, I'm going to remove that file now and I'm going to edit my definition. I'm going to tick the use platform specific map extension option and save and then run the deploy again. 
same server, same deployment script. That's completed successfully. And if we look on the server now and do an ls, you will see we have test1.aix. So it's built the map for the AIX platform and deployed it with the correct three letter extension. OK, let's do something a little bit more complicated. Let's remove test1. And then let's add back in test1. So we browse, press star, choose the map. Choose the map we want, paste in the map server location. And this time I'm going to choose add input card XML schemas and input data files. You will note that as well as adding the map here, it's added an additional two entries. It's going to send across the input.xml and the input.xsd, both in ASCII mode. And we can edit those if they need to be changed to binary mode, but they're fine as they are. So I'm going to save. I'm going to remove all files on the server. We have nothing over there now, and I'm going to run the deploy script again. This one will take a little longer. And done. And over on the server, we can see now that we have input XML, input XSD, as well as our compiled map. That's the basics of the deployment editor and deploying operations. Let's show you some of the issues that can be encountered while using it. OK, you notice that I removed test one and then added it back in using the option to deploy the additional files. There's a specific reason for that. Let's remove those two options and then remove the map again. Let's add the map back in and do it in two stages. First of all, we browse for the source map. We say we want that map. We say we want it deployed there. I'm not going to tick this option now. Before I deploy, I'm going to remove all files from the server. OK, so we have nothing over there and then I'm going to deploy. Done. If you have a look, we have just the map test1.aix. If I now try to change this to add in XML schema and input files and click finish, you will note that the two files are not listed. And indeed, if I run the deploy script again and done, again, you will see that only the map has come across. So adding that option after the effect and not while you're adding this uh, map into the deployment editor will not bring in the additional files that it needs. You can either add them manually or remove the map and add it in again, remembering to tick that option when you add the map in. OK, second issue. You might have noticed an all maps box here and you think to yourself, OK, that's quite useful. Let's have all maps deployed. Again, you've got a tick box here for adding in the input files, but we'll leave that as is for now. We'll save and we'll run the deploy script and we would expect to get our map to arrive over here. Let's remove everything. We've got nothing in there at the moment. We run our deploy script, and unfortunately, it fails. The details button tells you that there's a Java null pointer exception. So this is a known bug. Uh, it's being worked on, but the all maps option doesn't work. So they have to be added individually for now. Let's add our map back in manually, and I'll show you the XML that is produced in the deployment file. OK, so I've added in the map and the two files. I've chosen the platform specific extension. I'm going to save and let's switch to my ultra edit view of that file. And you will see that it is an XML file. So easily editable outside of the UI if you wanted to. And all the options that you're used um, are in there. So for example, you have the server there. You have the script name there. Deployment mode, ASCII for the two additional files components that are going to be deployed, the remote location, the source, MMS file, everything that you could need all in a nice neat XML format. I hope you find this deployment feature useful. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video presentation today. If you found the content interesting and informative, please hit that like button, perhaps leave a comment consider subscribing to my YouTube channel as I release content such as this on a regular basis. Feel free to reach out to me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett IBM. Thank you.